Welcome to an Achieving Science video. This video is going to look at the trends within the periodic table. The periodic table is then very, very important, as you can understand a lot about chemistry from it. The periodic table then is made up of groups. First of all, group one. Group one elements all have one outer electron, and they want to have a full outer shell and so they will give away this one electron. On the other side we have group 7 which needs one outer electron in order to have a full outer shell just like that of a noble gas. Elements in group 1 and 7 then, let's have a look. Let's choose one. So if we choose group 1, let's choose sodium in it. If we draw the atomic structure of sodium, we can therefore find that it has the electronic structure configuration of 2, 8, 1. This will therefore form a sodium ion if it reacts and therefore it will lose that one electron and therefore it will have a full outer shell of 8 and therefore now form a positive ion remembering that ions are shown in square brackets. On the other hand we have fluorine from group 7. It has the electronic configuration of 2 and 7. A fluorine ion then is formed when it gains an electron. This can therefore be shown via the diagram below, where again, because it is an ion, it is shown in square brackets, and as it has gained an electron, it is negatively charged. All group 1 elements therefore form plus 1 ions, whereas all group 7 elements form 1 minus ions. As these are oppositely charged, they want to interact with each other. Therefore, elements that react to form positive ions are metals. Elements that react and do not form positive ions are called non-metals. As they are oppositely charged, as we say, they want to react with each other, and these reactions can be seen in other videos. Now let's have a look at the difference between metals and non-metals. Do you already know some of the differences? Well, some of the differences include metals, first of all. Over 75% of the elements in the periodic table are metals. Their typical properties include that they have high melting and boiling points. They're good conductors of heat and electricity. They have high densities. They're shiny when they're polished and they can be hammered into shape. On the other hand, non-metals. These are found on the right hand side of the periodic table and tend to have the typical properties of having a low melting and boiling point. They tend to be poor conductors of heat and electricity. Instead, they're said to be good insulators. They have low densities. They're brittle and they're also dull in their appearance.